The Celestron Nexstar 8 SE is by far one of Celestron's most popular models that they have ever sold. But the question is, with so many people buying them, are they really any good? Or are these just telescopes that sit in the closet for years to come and don't get much use? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. So stick around. As always, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Max and welcome to my channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe. It helps me out and also helps me create more content for you guys in the future. As always, do comment below and let me know what you wanna see in the future, what types of telescopes or targets you want me to shoot with astrophotography. I'm always willing and open for ideas. Now today we're checking out the Celestron 8SE, which is right here. And this telescope is one of Celestron's most popular models that they have ever sold. In fact, it continues to be, even to this day, even though it has been replaced with a newer generation one-arm fork mount called the Evolution, the SE lineup still lives on to see even more night skies. Now, this is just a single arm fork arm design from Celestron, and this just has a motor in the base, a motor up here on the left side of the fork arm, and then your optical tube slides on and off a Vixen style dovetail rail. Now, this mount is capable of holding up to a 12 pound optical tube, so you can put anything from a refractor on here, a Maxutov Cassegrain up to about six inches or so. You can put up to an eight inch SCT since these are right around the limit of the 12 pound mark. Or you can use this for even a solar scope if you have a nice dedicated solar telescope that you want to put on here. Now the Celestron 8SE is their classic eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain with their Starbright XLT coatings. The C8 is one of the most versatile telescopes out there, and being a longtime owner, I know a thing or two about a C8. And it is one of the most versatile telescopes for the reason of is that you can quickly get to high magnification and view the rings of Saturn, the cloud belts on Jupiter, dial in on the moon. But you can also, with the right accessories, attach two inch eyepieces and see the whole moon as just one big image. Or you can back it off and see open clusters and wide field nebulae that uh, fit within the eyepiece, like Orion Nebula, for example. But it also allows you to use the hyperstar function up front here. So it has a removable secondary mirror that you can utilize for fast F2 astrophotography. So with the right accessories, you can attach your camera, get down to F2 imaging, which converts this 2000 millimeter optical tube down to just 390 millimeters. So that is crazy fast for wide field astrophotography. Now, this Altaz mount is not suited for astrophotography, except if you're going to do something like the moon or the planets, because this is an Al Tazmuth design, which means it has a motor going up and down and a motor going left and right. You'll want an EQ mount if you're going to do long exposure astrophotography, or at least that's what a lot of us suggest. Of course, you can get around that by doing really short exposures, but you're gonna have to take a lot of those in order to create a composite that's good enough. But then you're also going to introduce a thing called field rotation when you use an Altazmuth mount. So as it tracks up and around the sky, if you'll notice on something like Sky Safari or a planetarium program, when you zoom into Jupiter or Saturn, it'll start at one angle and it'll slowly rotate like this throughout the night. That's simply because of the rotation of the Earth. We're looking at it because we are tilted on an axis. As we track across the night sky, that angle changes simply because of our tilt. Now an EQ mount though, when you polar align it, you polar align it at your altitude and it gets rid of that rotation, which is why a lot of us use EQ mounts. Now this little telescope though is absolutely fantastic. It's about 1500 bucks. It is a little bit up there in the price range of beginner telescopes, of course. So you may want to consider one of the smaller counterparts, like maybe the five inch that is just under a thousand dollars if you don't want something this big. Now, this does feature Celestron's Next Star Plus hand controller with 42,000 objects inside its database. That is wonderful and fantastic. Just be realistic though, you will never see all of those objects, but it will show you all of the catalogs of objects that you need to absolutely see with an eight inch telescope. This is the USB style. Some of the older ones had the older serial style. Doesn't matter which style that you have if you're getting a used one off of Facebook Marketplace or something like that. They're all basically the same thing. They're all 
all going to point to the same type of target. So don't be afraid if it doesn't have the latest and greatest, because you can also upgrade to the newer style if yours happens to fail. Now this tripod that is supplied with the 8SE is kind of on the lighter weight end of the things. So this optical tube, like I mentioned, is on the very edge of what this mount can take. And so when you put it on the somewhat lighter duty tripod, you will have a lot of shaking that happens. So if you have a little bit of wind, or if you have some kids that like to touch and feel, that's going to be a problem for the image stabilization because it's going to shake on you. As well as if you put some high power eyepieces in here, and the minute you turn that focuser because you're touching and introducing a new vibration, it is going to shake the image just a little bit, unfortunately. The 8SE is powered by AA batteries that are located down here in the base, or you can hook up with a 12 volt power supply just on the bottom here of the fork arm. Now that is definitely the more reliable way of powering the device as it is going to be a lot better in terms of longevity because the AA batteries are not going to last nearly as long as a 12 volt battery supply externally will. The AA batteries will get you through a night, but as soon as they start draining down, the electronics and the tracking can become a little bit funky. Now in terms of portability though, this telescope is the most portable 8 inch on the market. And you're probably asking, well why would I buy this over something like Celestron CPC series that offers an Edge HD optical system? Well that's a very good question because this one is number one in my opinion in portability reasons though. This optical tube comes off, this optical tube is about 10 pounds. This fork arm comes off the tripod, that's about 5 pounds. Then the tripod is just another 5 or 10 pounds at most. So they really are not heavy components at all. So this whole thing fully assembled is about 25 pounds soaking wet without all your accessories on there. But this is also the top end of what this mount can handle. So anything over this, I wouldn't suggest. I would tell you to look elsewhere. But if you're okay with dealing with the stability issues, this is by far the easiest to use telescope. It is accurate. It tracks extremely well. And it will find anything that you want it to find after the star alignment. Now, as it sits for functionality reasons, this telescope, of course, is not suited for astrophotography, but it is suited immensely for visual astronomy. So this will get you deep into visual astronomy by letting you explore the night sky from anywhere, even from your front yard to a campsite location, to a national park, wherever you choose to take this, it will go. Since this telescope is set up primarily for lunar and planetary photographs. Let me show you a few that I've taken with a Celestron 8 inch so you can get an idea of the type of clarity that one of these can deliver for you. All in all, I think that the Celestron 8 SE is a fantastic choice for those who want something that is a perfect grab and go, but with a large aperture, or if this is your first telescope at diving deeper into the hobby of astronomy. I think that this is a great telescope to learn how to take photos of the moon and planets on and to broaden your horizon with what you can see visually with a telescope as this offers a large enough aperture to really dive down to 12th and 13th magnitude from a really dark sky location. I do have to say that the instability does really affect image quality sometimes. So if you are out on a gusty night, don't expect to see as much as a nice, clear, stable night that is calm, that doesn't shake your telescope. Now, with that being said, for a couple hundred dollars more, of course, you can upgrade to the CPC series or the, even the Evolution series, which will offer far substantial stability for you. But at the end of the day, for a good budget telescope, this is one of the best on the market. You just have to be okay with its shortcomings. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time in the video, and clear skies to you.